from the station working for you. This is breaking news from WRTV. And breaking news to begin this midday at college basketball's regular season is about to get underway this month. It appears the sport's biggest event is coming to Indianapolis in its entirety. Moments ago, the NCAA announced that it would move its entire men's basketball tournament to one location because of the ongoing pandemic. NCAA staff are now in preliminary talks with the city and the state officials to host the 68 teams competing in the tournament right here in central Indiana. The Division I men's basketball committee says holding the tournament in one location will enhance the health and safety of the players coaches and staff at each school this is a developing story and we'll have updates as soon as they come in for you at wrtv.com we'll also have more information for you tonight on the news at five and six o'clock so some big news there for the city of indianapolis as of today todd as we're talking about the forecast and maybe getting outside here around central indiana what do people need to know you know, you can definitely get outside today. The sun is shining. In fact, there's not a cloud in the sky. That's the best part of the forecast. Uh, still a little bit of a breeze, so if you are going to be out, you do need to have uh, the jacket handy and just bundle up a little bit. Here are those temperatures across the area right now. We're in the 40s and 50s, but you can take a couple degrees off those uh, temperatures that you see there when you factor in the wind, which is in the process of getting of picking up. Now, yesterday we had the wind advisory, wind gust over 60 miles per hour. We're not going to get into that territory for the remainder of the day but it's going to be more of an inconvenience it's definitely breezy with wind gusts that you see right now anywhere from 17 uh, miles per hour in Greencastle to 25 in Indy and uh, 31 in Muncie but the sun is shining and we'll keep the skies uh, cloud free here throughout the remainder of the day the closest system some snow in uh, Wisconsin that's exactly where that stays so again sunny this afternoon temperatures seasonable in the low 50s just going to feel a little bit cooler Lauren when you factor in the wind that is out there and as a whole our temperatures this week going to kind of be up and down we'll talk all about it coming up in main weather in just a few minutes all right todd thank you so much indianapolis firefighter matthew bennett is being honored again today less than a month before what would have been his 50th birthday this morning bennett's longtime co-workers led a procession to crown hill cemetery bennett had driven a fire truck to the scene of a possible building collapse friday morning when he complained of chest pains he was taken to the hospital for surgery but died saturday morning. Bennett had 23 years experience as a firefighter and was assigned to the Indianapolis Fire Department Station 1 on West 10th Street. He leaves behind a wife, three children, and three grandchildren. Final funeral arrangements are still pending. The new COVID-19 numbers are just in from the state health department and once again, Indiana reported more than 5,000 new cases of the virus in the latest report. 26 more Hoosiers have also died with the virus and that brings the total number of deaths in the state to 4,686. The positive test rate continues to climb. The seven day average is now at about 22% for unique individuals. As the U.S. saw 1 million new coronavirus cases just in the last week, there is more good news in the race for a vaccine. Moderna is the second drug company to announce that its vaccine is more than 90% effective in studies conducted so far. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. A sign of hope today. Moderna announcing its vaccine could be up to 94.5% effective in protecting people from COVID-19. The company planning to ask for FDA authorization in the coming weeks. Vaccines really are on the horizon. In fact, we now have real data in large phase three trials showing that they are safe and effective at preventing COVID-19. This comes one week after Pfizer said its vaccine is also more than 90% effective. Unlike Pfizer, Moderna's vaccine can be stored at regular refrigeration temperatures, which could make distribution easier. In public health, we do not get 90% plus effective vaccines often. And here we have two vaccines with that type of efficacy and clean safety profiles. The U.S. is battling record high case numbers with 1 million new infections reported in the last week alone. Local officials cracking down. Michigan's governor suspending indoor dining and ending in-person learning at high schools and and colleges. We are in the worst moment of this pandemic to date. 
The situation has never been more dire. In El Paso, Texas, haunting images show prison inmates helping to wheel the dead out of the medical examiner's office into mobile morgues. 36-year-old Kelly Meeker from Minnesota has a warning for others. She's been hospitalized for over a month and was just recently taken off a ventilator. I've heard a lot of stories of people telling me that they've had COVID, but it wasn't very bad. It was just a mild cold. But I'm just here to say that it can be much more serious. HHS Secretary Azar tells ABC News vaccines could be distributed to 20 million people by the end of the year, with the most vulnerable populations getting them first. But experts say widespread vaccination could take months. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Well, the increase in COVID-19 cases means that a number of Central Indiana students are heading back home to continue their school years virtually. E-learning began again today for students in Wayne Township schools, while students in Washington Township will start learning from home tomorrow. Many other school districts are also making the switch, and we have a list of all those changes right now on our website. Just go to WRTV.com. Organization Day for State Legislature is tomorrow. One year ago, you'll recall that state lawmakers were greeted by a sea of red thousands of teachers from across the state calling for higher pay and better working conditions. Teachers will not be able to replicate Red for Ed rally tomorrow because of the pandemic, but the Indiana State Teachers Association says COVID-19 has made the situation more dire in public education. The union says that a teacher shortage continues and one teacher says morale among the educators is low. No matter how you slice it, we put in a lot of hours that often we are not compensated for. This combination of refusing to pay teachers what they are worth and expecting them to do more and more with less and less is just totally unsustainable. Well, the Teachers Association is pushing for several measures, including a minimum starting teacher salary of $40,000. It isn't getting as much attention during the pandemic, but it's still a big problem. Next, how one Hoosier doctor is trying to make inroads against the ongoing issue of the opioid addictions. Todd. And Lauren, temperatures today are pretty seasonable, but we're kind of in the battleground of the warmer temperatures to the south and the cooler air to the north. And that means we're going to battle back and forth between some cold air and some more spring-like air. We'll talk about the temperature trend heading our way for the remainder of the week and into the weekend coming up when the news at noon continues right here on WRTV. Welcome back. As the COVID-19 pandemic continues, Indiana and the rest of the country are still dealing with another problem that's also led to thousands of overdose deaths. Our own Kelsey Anderson has the story of how one local doctor is fighting the problem of opioid addiction. Dr. Brian Badman is a shoulder surgeon who has started working with his patients to ease the opioid crisis. He says as a physician, he believes he has a responsibility to work with his patients to make sure they don't get addicted to the pain medication he prescribes. So he started treating patients during surgery with Expirol, a fairly new drug that helps with pain management at the site of the surgery. Dr. Badman says on average, they are seeing patients who they treat with Expirol taking nine less pain pills. As physicians, we, we prescribe a lot of opioids. And so now we're seeing patients who have unfortunately become addicted to this. Um, so nine, we know that if you take, if a person's on pain pills for longer than eight days, the, the chances of being on pain pills after a year, they've got about a 15% incidence of chronic narcotic use after uh, merely eight days. We spoke to one of his patients who said he took the pain medicine on the first day post surgery, but only as a precaution. He says he really just had some discomfort and very little pain. Working for you, Kelsey Anderson, WRTV. Kelsey, thank you. Dr. Badman says that all surgeries are going to come with some pain, and that's why he takes the time to let his patients know that they aren't going to feel 100%, but he says they likely won't need the amount of painkillers that they think that they do. Well, businesses across central Indiana are having to make changes once again. Next, we'll show you what they're doing to both scale down and stay alive as this pandemic drags on. And let's take a live look outside right now. This is our tower cam review to the west. You can see the White River there going across your screen in the background, sunny skies, and Todd has a full look at our forecast for the week ahead coming up when the news at noon continues on WRTV.
New restrictions on businesses are now in place in Marion County. It's an effort to slow the spread of COVID-19. So bars and entertainment venues are now limited to indoor capacity of 25%, while restaurants are limited to 60% indoors. Our Nicole Griffin spoke to some business owners about the impact the limits will have right before the holidays. We're going to open tomorrow and we're going to see what happens. Um, it. There, there's just no telling. Located right on Monument Circle, Supremacy has been a prime lunch spot for downtown workers for many years. But since the start of the pandemic, the store manager says they went from 90% of sales coming from people buying lunch in the store to now down to 10%. We want employees back in the offices, back in the buildings. Parents that were back at work are now back at home because they have to stay home with their kids. In order to adapt, Supremacy is relying on lunch delivery, meal deals, and frozen delivery. Jason Manship, the owner of Moonshot Games, is continuously adapting as well. On Monday, his mass app location will be reduced down to 25% capacity. We're just fighting through it like everyone else. I think uh, restrictions come and go. Uh, rules change and we just adapt to be as flexible as we can to keep serving our customers. The Mass Ave location is 75% event space, but now Manship is considering shifting it to mainly retail as the holiday shopping season gets underway. He says his biggest concern is the mental health of his customers and not having a safe space for them to come due to the new restrictions. We'd love to see our numbers back up again, but safety is more important than any anything like that. So. Um, you know, we we have made a conscious decision to be open um, instead of just shutting down entirely. Uh, we believe that, you know, we want to see our business survive and we want to see people that support us and that play the games that we work hard to foster. You know, we, we get told all the time, you know, this is the only place I go, right? This is the only place I get out to go because... You know, COVID's locking us down. As some businesses have been forced to close down completely due to the financial impact of the pandemic, the business owners we talked to are hopeful they will make it through and people will eventually come back downtown. I know that our downtown is one of the best downtowns in the country. I know that we are going to get through this. We're going to get through this together. Working for you, Nicole Griffin, WRTV. Nicole, thank you. Let's take a turn right now to our forecast on this Monday. Todd, what can people expect today and the rest of our work week? You know, it's going to be a dry week for us, Laura, and that's the good news. There's lots of opportunity to get out and about. You're just going to have to bundle up a little different at times uh, throughout the course of the week because our temperatures are what are going to be uh, varying quite a bit as we go forward throughout the week. Here's a live look outside right now, and you can see all the sunshine that we have out there. But with that sunshine, uh, temperatures are still on the chilly side. We are currently sitting in the 40s in most locations. Shelbyville, as you see there, is now up at 251 degrees but 49 is the current temperature right now in Indianapolis as well as Bloomington you factor in the wind and the wind is starting to kick up once again across uh, the area that is uh, the problem uh, for today you know we didn't have the wind it's just a sunny and seasonable day for us across uh, the area uh, but that wind is making it feel a little bit cooler as you see there in the 30s and 40s across the area so the further north you are the wind is a little bit stronger and it'll continue to pick up here throughout the remaining of uh, the day as uh, the winds will get back in that 30 to 35 mile per hour wind gust category as we approach the midnight hour. Now yesterday we were gusting over 60 miles per hour so we've cut the wind speeds in half uh, and so it's not going to cause much in the way of damage but it is probably enough uh, to cause uh, some inconvenience issues out there if you're driving around you're walking around uh, with the wind that'll be gusting and it's going to make these temperatures which will be your highs for the day today in the 40s to the north and 50s from any Indianapolis to the south feel even a little bit cooler. So 56 in Bloomington is going to feel probably closer to 50 and the upper 40s to the north going to feel probably a little closer to 41, 42 degrees throughout the afternoon hours. Everything is quiet here across central Indiana and we're not expecting much in the way of any weather in our area until uh, later in the weekend. I'll quickly take you down to the Gulf of Mexico because this is potentially a catastrophic situation as now Category 5 a storm uh, hurricane uh, Iota is making its way towards Nicaragua. It's really strengthened. You see those clouds and the well-defined eye. This is a very, very significant storm. It's going to be the second one to impact that area in a short period of time, uh, really just a couple weeks. This evening, closer to home, partly cloudy, temperatures in the 40s. Tomorrow, we start off in the th 
the 30s. It's a cold start, and the problem is tomorrow with sunshine. We really don't even warm a whole lot throughout the course of uh, the day, only getting back up into the low 40s. And then Wednesday morning, we're all waking to temperatures that will be in the 20s. It's a cold, cold start to our Wednesday. But once we get past Wednesday morning, we kind of turn the page, and we'll see the temperatures start to moderate. And from Thursday... All the way through the weekend, Lauren, temperatures will be in the 60s. That's about 10 to 15 degrees above normal, depending on where you are. So it's chilly the next couple days, and then we'll be above normal. And as far as rain chances go, I think we're dry until at least late Saturday. And then into Sunday, some rain showers may impact the area. But something to look forward to with the warmer temperatures heading our way later this week. All right, Tom, thank you so much. Well, they've always been made for adults as well as children, but during the pandemic, the demand for animated shows among us grown-ups appears to be bigger than ever. Casey Mendoza with our partners at Newsy takes a look at what's behind this big push for new cartoons. Okay, I want you to take that vial of Simpsons goo and this picture to this address. They'll make us new Simpsons. Between hit series like Adult Swim's Rick and Morty and animes like My Hero Academia, we're in the middle of an animation renaissance. Right now, it's probably the biggest audience for adults, adult animation that we've seen. It's not a fringe thing to be watching anymore. During the pandemic, animation has only gotten more popular. The genre saw a 22% increase in viewership during the lockdown, according to the streaming search engine Real Good. That's more than any other category analyzed by the company. Come watch TV! In the streaming industry alone, platforms like Netflix and Hulu are bulking up their original animation lineups. When HBO Max launched in May, it heavily marketed its exclusive Studio Ghibli collection. And back in October, Sony was reportedly in talks to acquire the anime streaming service Crunchyroll for nearly $1 billion. Beyond that increase in demand, animation companies were also one of the few in entertainment that could continue working during the lockdowns. Animation is itself um, a, a mode of making content that has been less impacted by COVID because it's not something that necessarily requires physical presence. And so we've been able to innovate in a variety of ways to ensure that like the, the production lines keep humming and the content um, keeps delivering. Animators are working from home. Actors are installing voiceover booths in their closets. And back in April, the Writers Guild of America reminded its members, most of whom work for live action productions, that studios and producers are increasingly interested in developing animated projects. Early on when it was evident that animation was the only thing that could, that was really sort of COVID proof, we were getting tons of animated show pitches, you know, like all of a sudden everyone had time and availability and apparently a, an animated idea in their back pocket. See, now this show is a comedy that can balance both humor and dramatic tension. It is demonstrating itself to be part of the mainstream and and part of the sort of pop culture zeitgeist. Keith Mendoza, Newsy, Chicago. Well, the WRTV Toy Drive is finally here, and this is our 20th year of helping to make sure that every child has a new toy this holiday season. Because of the pandemic, we will not be collecting toys here at the station, but we are taking your donations of new unwrapped toys at any Central Indiana youth store location. You can also make a financial donation at WRTV.com slash toy drive. And be sure to stay tuned as we have a number of other special events where you can help with the WRTV Toy Drive over the next month. Let's get one final check of our forecast with Todd Clausen on this Monday. Hey, Todd. And it's a decent day for us today. Lauren, a little breezy here once again this afternoon, but plenty of sunshine out there. The next couple days are going to be cool, but sunny. That's the good news. 44 tomorrow. Wednesday morning starts really cold in the mid-20s, and then only up to 47 in the afternoon. But once we get past Wednesday, Thursday, all the way through the weekend, temperatures will be well above normal, climbing all the way up into the 60s. A lot of dry hours to get out there and enjoy as well. It's probably not till late Saturday, but more so Sunday. That's some showers and to the forecast, Lauren. Todd, thanks, and thank you for joining us and making WRTV your choice for news. Come back and join us for the news at five and have a great Monday.